Hello boys, I hope everyone's well. I hope you enjoyed the last video, won't we? Uh, next up it's Lobin, he's doing some activity with us. And uh, after that it's Sarah, she's doing some talk with us. Well, thanks for that, Stephen. Um, I hope your boys are enjoying your week off school. I know I am. Uh, so as you can see, tonight we're going to play a game of Top Trumps. Now, I'm sure you've all played Top Trumps. Uh, they're nothing to do with the former American president, thankfully, and they are nothing to do with other sort of Trumps that come out of parts of your body even better. So, um... As you can see there, basically there's 10 questions. Uh, there's a topic for each question. Um, and there's two objects on each question. So you basically have to choose which one you think is a top trump each time. And you can take a note of how many you get right. And if you get 10 out of 10, you win a big pat on the back, virtually. So you might want to take note of this as we go along. So I'll go through them and then I'll go over the answers. So here's the first one. Who is the oldest person? Is it the Queen or David Attenborough? And I'm not really giving you a clue. They're both, uh, they're actually both the same age. Um, so it's, you're talking about months. Okay. So write down who you think, the Queen or David Attenborough. Okay, second one then, the tallest object, a double-decker bus or a giraffe. I could maybe have put our company captain in there. He's maybe taller than both of them, I'm not sure. But we'll just go for uh, this one for now. A double-decker bus or a giraffe. You decide now. Okay, a third one. Which was the first to arrive in the UK? Yep, boys, there actually was a time when you didn't have KFC or McDonald's in the UK. And you know what? We still were able to find food to eat. So, which came first, KFC or McDonald's? The chicken or the McEgg muffin? Okay, even stranger one here. What's the largest world record? So this is in terms of number. So was a dog able to get more tennis balls in his mouth than there was a number of dogs in a conga line? Okay, so what one would be the most number of tennis balls in a dog's mouth or the number of dogs in a conga line? Yeah. Okay, put your thinking caps on for that and see how you get on. Okay, so this one's the longest duration. Now what that means is if you put all the sort of films together, how long do they last? Okay, so which ones would last longer? If you put all eight Harry Potter films together, would they last longer than all nine Star Wars films? Okay, so have a think about that. You've maybe seen all of both of them. Okay. Maybe some films seem longer than others, but that's usually if you don't enjoy them. Um, okay, so Harry Potter or Star Wars? Decide now. Okay then, so which one would be the heaviest coin? Is a 5p piece a heavy, heavier than a 1p piece? Okay. As a chemistry teacher, I should point out it's not always about size, it's about their density. So have a think about that. 5p or 1p? Decide now. So which is the largest population between these two countries? Is it Spony Scotland? Achai the new. Or is it Wales? I can't do a Welsh accent. Aye boy -o. Daffodils, yeah, uh, stereotypes, there we go. So which one is the largest population? Is it Scotland or is it Wales? You decide, is it the flower of Scotland or is it the land of my father's? You decide now. Now, 
the oldest chocolate bar now and that doesn't mean the one that's passed its best before date maybe it fell down the back of your sofa or went somewhere from a selection box at Christmas this means since the first one was ever made what was the first chocolate bar made was it Cadbury's Dairy Milk or was it a Mars bar okay maybe you need to try one of these when the quiz is over just to see which one you like the most but Cadbury's Dairy Milk or Mars bar you decide Okay, so uh, this one then, uh, which is the heaviest? Is it a football team of 11 men? Obviously there are ladies football teams, but men tend to be a bit heavier. And that of course is the mighty Liverpool. Um, good job they didn't weigh all the trophies they've won over the last couple of years as well, because obviously there'd be no contest. So 11 men, is that heavier than a week of elephant poo? Now, not a big expert in this, but not sure how often elephants poo but they eat a fairly plant-based diet so you would reckon they're fairly regular so there's probably quite a quite an amount arrives uh, during the course of a week but if you added all that elephant poo together from one elephant would it weigh more than Virgil van Dyke and Jordan Henderson and Bobby Firmino and the rest that is the question for you to decide so choose now Football team or elephant poo? Alright then, so what's the largest number here if you added up all the R's in a week? No, I'll try that again because I read that wrong. If you added up all the R's in a year? Okay, so how many days are there in a year? How many R's are there in a day? Or how many minutes there are in a week? So think about how many minutes there are in an hour, how many hours there are in a day, how many days there are in a week. What would be the biggest number? Hours in a year, minutes in a week. Think and write it down. Okay, so that's 10. Some of those are pretty tricky. Uh, in fact, most of them are pretty tricky. But I'm going to run through the answers now so you can check your own answers and see how you get on. Okay, so the first one, so I told you, uh, these people are both, I think they're both 94. Which one's the oldest? Well, if you look there, it is Her Majesty the Queen. Um, she was born in April 1926. Uh, Sir David Attenborough was born a month later in May 1926. So the Queen is the oldest person in that one, although she's looking pretty good for her age. So um, the Queen is the correct answer for number one. Next one then, what's the tallest object, a double decker bus or a giraffe? What did we think there? Well the answer is a giraffe. Giraffes can grow to a height of above five and a half meters. Double decker bus, um, London double decker buses are made in Ballymena by the way, or they used to be anyway, uh, and that's just under five meters. So giraffe's the answer for that one. What was first in the UK, KFC or McDonald's? What will be the last to leave? Who knows? Let's see. Well, you might have thought McDonald's, but as I see, it was KFC. KFC's been here since 1965. That's an awfully long time ago. That is um, over 50 years. McDonald's only arrived here in 1974. So they're a bit earlier than that. The first McDonald's didn't arrive in Northern Ireland until maybe 1990 or something like that. But um, uh, there you go. So KFC is a correct answer there. Okay, so what's the biggest number here? The number of tennis balls in the dog's mouth, the number of dogs in the conga line. I'm really interested to see this one myself. Yeah, so the answer here is the number of dogs in the conga line. Now don't be tempted to try either of those with your animals at home. Okay, maybe with your brothers and sisters, but not your animals. Okay, longest, the longest duration then. Um, which film lasts the longest? I don't know. Uh, Harry Potter films seem to go on forever for me, but that's probably because I'm not a big fan. Sorry, Sarah. Okay, so when you add them all up, Star Wars wins by about an hour. 20 hours, 39 minutes to f for Star Wars to 19 hours, 40 minutes for Harry Potter. Now, in Harry Potter's defense, it is one 
film less. So if there was another Harry Potter film, it definitely would have taken the lead. But the correct answer for this one is Star Wars. The Force is strong. Hmm. Okay then, so what's the heaviest coin here? 5p or 1p? Well, the answer there, believe it or not, is 1p. 1p is slightly heavier than the 5p. And that is it's because of the mixture of metals that's used to make up 1p is heavier than 5p. And... Uh, it's because iron or steel is in the 1p piece and if you don't believe me take a magnet to a 1p and a 5p and you'll see that it sticks to a 1p but not to a 5p. Let's get the largest population then. Okay, Scotland, the home of Iron Brew and Deep Fried Mars Bars or Wales, the home of Daffodils and Alad Jones. Well, we can see there Scotland quite a bit bigger, five and a half million to Wales is 3.1, both of which are bigger than Northern Ireland. We're about 1.6, 1.7, I think. Okay, chocolate, some people's expert subject possibly. So dairy milk versus Mars bar, what do we think here? Which one is oldest? It is Cadbury's dairy milk. It's been around for over a hundred years. Mars Bar is a relatively young pup. It's only been around since 1932. So the correct answer to that one, and possibly the tastiest of the two, is the Cadbury's Dairy Milk. The heaviest weight. Who is heavier, Liverpool or a pile of elephant poo? Which some people would say is a description of how they've been playing recently, but I wouldn't. So, um, let's see. Believe it or not, a week of elephant poo weighs a thousand kilograms, a ton approximately, which is heavier than a football team. So the next time you see a football team running around, just think an elephant poos more than that in a week. And just be very glad that you don't have to clean it up. Next time you go to the zoo, give those zookeepers a special wave, the ones who are looking after the elephants, because I don't envy their job at all. And then which is the largest number? Hours in a week. Sorry, I did it again. Hours in a year or minutes in a week? Well, there is 7, 8,760 hours in a year. So that would be 24 in a day multiplied by 365 for a year. That would give you that number. Minutes in a week, you would have to multiply 60 multiplied by 24 for one day multiplied by 7. So that gets you a bigger number, 10,080. So minutes in a week is a winner in that one. And that, my friends, is that. I hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, interesting. I've certainly learnt new facts. I don't think that elephant poo one will ever leave my head now, so I'll be able to uh, to tell people that one when I meet them in the street. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you got 10 out of 10, brilliant. Uh, I'm not quite sure how you did that. Uh, if you're getting more than 5 out of 10 on those, it's, uh, it's very good because those are very, very tricky. But it's only for a bit of fun anyway, so hope you enjoyed it all. Okay, guys. Hope you have a good uh, rest of your week and uh, chat you again soon. Just going to pass you on now over to Sarah, who's going to tell you your story for today. Bye-bye. Tonight, we're going to be looking at the parable of the sower. Um, as you know, we have been continuing our little theme from last year, which was men who had jobs in the Bible. So tonight we are going to be looking at this man. Um, we don't know his name. He's just in a story. Um, if you don't know what a parable is, it is a little story that Jesus told his people um, to explain something a little bit better. So say you're in church and... The minister is talking and you maybe don't understand what he's saying because he's using big words a parable would be like him saying a little story to help you understand 
Um, this man is also a farmer. Um, it's his job, it's what he's doing. Um, and you probably know somebody who's a farmer or know somebody who lives on a farm because you live in Northern Ireland and they're everywhere. Um, and probably if you don't go too far from your house, you'll be able to see fields or tractors or a person farming. Um, now back in, in these days, farming looked a little bit differently. It was just one man who went out with his with a bag of seed um, and he was trying to plant his fields and maybe he had workers to help him, but he didn't have any machines, he didn't have any tractors or anything to help him. So we're going to listen to this story today. Jesus went down and sat by a lake and began to teach a small crowd that was there. As he was teaching, such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat, pushed out a little into the lake and sat down. While the crowd stood on the shoreline, he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen to me, a sower went out to sow some seed. As he sowed, some seeds fell along the path. And then the birds came down and devoured them all, so no seeds were left along the path. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. They sprang up quickly, but because the soil was not deep, they did not grow. When the sun came up, they were scorched, and because they did not have sufficient root, they withered. Other seeds fell among thorns. As the seeds began to grow, the thorns came up and choked them. However, some seeds fell on good soil. And they began to grow, and they produced grain. Some grew a hundred times as much, some sixty, and some thirty. The one who has ears had better listen. Later on, after Jesus had finished telling the story, Jesus explained the meaning of the parable to his disciples. When anyone hears the word about the kingdom, and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches what he has sown in his heart. This is the seed thrown along the path. The bird came and snatched it, and it did not get a chance to grow. The seed thrown on the rocky ground is the person who hears the word, and is immediately excited by the word. But because he has only been in the word for such a short time, there's no root can develop. And if any trouble comes because of what he has heard, immediately he will fall away. The seed thrown among the thorns is the person who hears the word, but is enticed by other things. So he wants money or fields or more houses. And as soon as anything like that comes along, he does not continue in the word and he does nothing about it. But as for the seed that is sown on good soil, this is the person who hears and understands the word. The person who understands and is like the good soil that grows 160 or 30 times as much, he bears fruit, yielding 160 or 30 times what he has sown. That means that he hears what God says in the Bible, he understands it, and he does something about it, or he goes and tells people about it. That's what bearing fruit means as a Christian. Thank you so much for listening again to this week's story. Um, we really hope that you're still enjoying these because we are really enjoying making them. Um, and we hope that you are really enjoying listening to them. Um, so next week, Robin's going to be telling us a story. Um, Stephen's going to be doing a game. Um, so look forward to that. Um, but for now, we're just going to pray. Um, and then we are going to stop. Um, so let's pray. Father God, um, help us to be like the good soil in our lesson today. Help us to hear what you say to us in your word, the Bible, to understand it and to grow up to be the kind of boy that you want us to be. Um, we thank you for all these things. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.